All right, so we're talking about um, unattainable wishes is the last piece of syntax in unit 17. Um, we're, before we do that, though, we're going to review a little bit. We're going to talk about semi-attainable wishes, okay, of the type that we already had. That is, when you have the optative as the main verb of a sentence and no on, that's the key thing, mm -hmm. just a plain old optative, it's a, it's a wish optative, maybe you remember. And you can have a particle combination like ethe or agar optionally um, to go with it, um, but you don't have to because the wish optative is clear enough if you just have the optative as the main verb and no on. So that's our first example, ethe, that's the optional particle combination to signal a wish. Pau simen, the aorist optative first person plural of pao to stop, and tus polemius, the enemy, in accusative case. So it means if only we could stop the enemy. When you do a wish in the optative, you're really pretty unsure that it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, the uh, likelihood is dim. Um, but you can push it farther if you use these particles, the wish particles, atha or agar, with indicative, past tense indicatives. This is something similar to the contrafactual conditional syntax. So, atha et pawaman tus palamius, I think this is intuitively reasonable, means would that, I, I wish that we were stopping the enemy. Now, already by then, when you've said that, it's not possible anymore, mm -hmm. right? Because we aren't, is what's implied, right? And when you go further and use the aorist, atha et pawaman tus palamius, it means would that we, or I wish that we had stopped the enemy, and they're super clear that we didn't. Right? So these are interesting kind of extended syn syntax of wishes that's comparable to the, the way s conditional syntax works um, in an interesting way.